Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are going to be setting up SSH to use a FIDO USB authenticator, namely a YubiKey 4. As of February 2020, the OpenBSD team has released OpenSSH version 8.2, which now supports FIDO and FIDO2 U2F security keys. YubiKeys are hardened security keys that provide one-time pads through a USB interface. This means you have to explicitly authorize a new SSH session by tapping the UB key. The private SSH key, which is normally stored on your hard drive, should be useless to a malicious user who does not have access to the physical UB key on which the second private key is stored. This means that even if your SSH keys are stolen, an attacker will not be able to access your servers. The benefit of using a device like this includes eliminating phishing, password theft, authentication replays, and a lot of other attacks. Since the, the device authenticates to a specific realm, such as a server address or URL, an attacker can't reuse one site's authentication on another site, which makes phishing impossible. Nobody can steal your private key either, since it's on the device itself and extracting it is likely impossible. The only plausible attack is physical theft with the device, which can be mitigated by making the device ask for a pen or fingerprint and wiping itself after a few wrong attempts. Another benefit of having this built into SSH is that you don't specifically need a YubiKey or to mess with extra software like YubiKey Agent, PIV mode, or anything else. You just plug any FIDO2 compatible key in, and you can use it with SSH. I've tested this with YubiKey 5, YubiKey 4, SoloKey, and they all work the same. This sort of setup is ideal for hardened jump boxes that connect to your cloud infrastructure or backend servers. To get this set up, the first thing we need to do is make sure both the client and the server is running OpenSSH 8.2 or higher. In order to check this, you'll run the SSH-V command, and you can see what version of OpenSSH you're running. Next, we need to generate the SSH key pair. The SSH key pair can either be the ECDSA-SK or an ED25519-SK, which we see here. The SK extension stands for security key. Note that an ED25519SK key pair is only supported by new versions of YubiKey with firmware 5.2.3 or higher. Um, we can check this by running this command, which I will have in the description. And you can see that on the YubiKey 4, it's version 4.3.7. So in this example, we'll be using the ECDSA-SK key, which is not recommended because apparently it has an NSA backdoor. Um, so when you do this in real life, make sure you use the ED25519-SK key. With that out of the way, we can generate our key pair. So we're going to do this the traditional way using the SSH key gen command. And we are going to use hyphen T for type, and it's going to be ECDSA hyphen SK. And then I'm going to stick this in my desktop. And then now we're going to need to touch the FIDO key. I'm going to skip the passphrase, and our key is generated. Once we've generated the key, we need to copy it over to the server. So we're going to use the SSH copy ID command. And then it's going to be the public key that we copy over. And then we're going to copy it over to the server. We've copied it over. And now we're going to test it. So we're going to SSH use the identity key, so the test key. It's going to ask us to touch the key, so we're going to press it. And we're logged in. As you see, setting up SSH to work with two-factor authentication using a YubiKey or any other security key is quite simple. But it does have one major security consideration, and that's that the secret key is stored on a physical device that can be lost. 
So if you're going to do this, make sure you don't lose the key. And even better yet, set it up with a backup key. So you can generate this once with one key and then go through the same process again with the second key and take that second key and store it away in a safe or someplace where it won't get lost. And remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.